it's been a minute. I'm back and I'm ready to react to that NFL combine where the Knowles decided to show up and show out. Get ready. 86370TV is back in the building. What is going on, Florida State family? Seminole Nation in the 863 tribe. It is your boy, Polk, a.k.a. Alo, a.k.a. the goddamn truth. And it's been a minute, but we back, baby. And we live from the great country of Korea. It's cold. It's cold. But anyway, we're here. We here to talk about some combine. We are here to talk about the Knowles who may have shaked up some things in the draft and made themselves a little bit of money. But before we get into all of that, y'all know what to do. Hit that like button. Comment under the video your thoughts. Share the video. And subscribe. Let's not waste no more time, man. Let's look at these combine results. And let's talk about each player and whether they rose up in the uh, draft rankings or rather maybe they uh, took a little plunge. Let's get into it. Y'all know I have to start off with the probably the biggest mover, not only in Florida State's combine participants, but maybe in the entire draft. And that is none other than number 55. The man that I argued might have been the biggest addition, even bigger than Keon. I remember having that argument with some of my faithful f uh, followers and subscribers. But Braden Fisk, as you see here, 6'3", 292. But the man ran a 4740, had some of the best times out of any player in his position group in the draft. Or at the combine, excuse me. What does that mean for his draft status? He's all but solidified the second round. The question is, will a team take him in the first? If he goes first, I'm, I'm looking at 20. And behind that, so, you know, 21, 22. But I don't know, man. I'm telling you. If, if somebody was to take him that late first round, I would not be shocked. I think Braden Fisk made himself a ton of money. Great motor, uh, great, you know, just everything. Great combine times, uh, tape matches. Uh, Fisk is going to be a player for somebody. Maybe the only knock on Fisk is that he's a little longer in the tooth in terms of age. But at the end of the day, I think Braden Fisk, uh, might be the biggest riser after his combine performance. Speaking of Keon Coleman, Keon Coleman is who we're going to cover next. Um, Keon Coleman hits all the measurables when you talk about big NFL body receivers. Some may be disappointed in that 40 time. Uh, probably what we were thinking more in the 4-5 range. He hits the 4-6. But he kind of made up for it in the drills. And uh, one of those players that may very well be uh, considered to have uh, gain speed and not track speed. I think if you watch that about Keon, most would agree. Uh, Keon, in my opinion, he just kind of stayed steady. I don't know. If, I don't think he made himself any money. I don't think he lost himself any money. I always viewed Keon as uh, uh, anywhere from the... The, the 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 early 20s and down type of a, a draft pick. So if you told me that he was taken with 42nd overall, that wouldn't shock me or something of that nature. Like um, I think that's where he is. I never I never viewed him as a top 15 pick. So for me, Keon Coleman is right about where I think he is. Again, didn't make or lose any money. Just kind of stand, stand pat. Could have, could have helped himself with a better 40 time. But again, I think the drill showed that he's got more game speed than track speed. So solid performance from a man, Keon. Next up is Ronaldo Green, aka Nardo. Uh, he measures in as what is the prototype for the most part of the NFL corner, a six footer. With a good wingspan, 
um, good 40 time, that 4-4, that four, four, even the low 4-5. I mean, that's a good 40 time. That's going to keep him in the league for a good time. And then, and then his his tape is going to also reflect um, that he's a good, solid player. Where does that get him drafted is the question for Ronaldo Green. Uh, I have a hard time seeing any team probably take a first or second round pick on him. But a third rounder, for sure, he's going to be a guy with the premium on the wide receiver position where you got to have guys to cover those. And I think Ronaldo Green has himself in the mix for that second tier corner type. You know, not one of the top corners in the draft, but maybe the second tier. He's probably in that mix. So I'm thinking late second, but at best late second, but most likely you're looking at the third round pick in Ronaldo Green. I think he did himself pretty well here and with his combine performance, if I'm being honest with you. Let's keep it moving. Next up on the list is Kalen DeLoach. And this is the one that I think is an interesting one for me, if I'm being honest with you. Um, there's a lot of things about DeLoach that I think kind of surprised me. And maybe not in the best way. Look, I love Kalen. He was a great player for us. But he's not as long as I thought he would be. Um, the weight is about what I expected. But the problem is... 455, five, that's a good 40. But at 210 pounds, man, you, you almost want to, I mean, you know, you want to see in the 4'4 four, four range, most likely at the linebacker position. Only 5'11. I thought the loach was bigger than that. Um, not the biggest wingspan in the world. Not saying that means a lot for a linebacker, but it damn sure doesn't hurt. Didn't do the bench press. I can understand why when you look at some of these measurables, I think. I think, I think Kalen DeLoach, uh, not a high vert. I mean, <laughs> I think DeLoach didn't show that he was the twitchy athlete maybe that um, could have got him drafted higher. If I'm being honest with you, um, I, I, I could see DeLoach slipping a little bit, but that's just my opinion. Um, I know I'm probably in the minority there. But I don't know if Kalen DeLoach, if, if I'm projecting a draft right now, uh, fourth round and below for Kalen DeLoach, get in the right place. Maybe you use him in a specific way. Uh, definitely can be a special teamer. Um, but at best, I'm probably talking for fifth round. Uh, if he went undrafted, I would not be shocked. Shout out to Kalen DeLoach. Just my honest opinion. Let's keep it pumping. Jaheen Bell, next up on the list here for Florida State players at the Combine. And I'm going to tell you, personally, I think Jaheen Bell had a decent showing. I don't know uh, where he gets drafted. Again, we're just here to project some things. Um, he's not the biggest tight end, but he's not the smallest either. He's a unique player in the sense of, is he a running back? Is he a tight end? You can flex him out at receiver. He has good enough speed, in my opinion, at 6'2", 242 with the 4'6". Um, good, good reach, big hands, can jump with a 35-inch vert. I mean, I think he's a great, uh, very, very good athlete. And because of that, he can have some success at the NFL level. I would take, this is another guy that I'm thinking is in the mid-tier range in terms of draft. I'm thinking third to fourth round for Jaheim Bell. There's not really a, 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 a tight end. Well, I won't say there's not a tight end premium, but maybe not a premium for a tight end built in his manner. But a team could definitely use him to make a weapon of him. Uh, but his draft stock, in my opinion, is, around, is another guy that's in that third to fourth round. A solid day from Jaheim Bell. Now, if you want to talk about guys who made some money, this might be the guy for you. Shout out to Jerry and Jones, J-Dub. Him and Ronaldo almost have identical measurements. 
But a 438 is big time for number seven. A 40 inch vert is big time for number seven. He's showing that he's a twitchy athlete. He's showing that he's a guy who you might be able to put out there on an island. Um, well, how he plays at the NFL level is one thing. But this is a guy who made a complete 180 from his early time here at Florida State where a lot of people, man, were, were tired, if we're being frank, of the tape he was putting out. So by the time he left here last year, you could argue he was one of the top two or three DBs on the team. And I think he went to the combine and made himself a little bit of money. Now, where that, where does that equate in his draft status? I don't know. But he's got some pretty, pretty good times, pretty, pretty good uh, combine numbers in total here. And I wouldn't be shocked as we talked about Ronaldo with the premium of the receiver position. Running a 4-3-8. I would not be shocked if a team took him third, second round. This is a I think him and Ronaldo Green almost have very identical draft grades. I'm talking late second, third, you know, is it? Crazy to see him fall to the fourth round? No, not at all. But if I had to guess, I'm I'm looking at late second through midway to third round. Both of FSU corners should be off of the board. Shout out to J-Dub, man. That's some good stuff. And I'm actually happy to be wrong about Jerry and Jones. Let's keep it pushing. Next up is Trey. Benson, and look, you want to talk about NFL body. You want to talk about NFL ready. You want to talk about a guy who could play day one at six foot 216, running the 4-3-9. Like Trey Benson is ready to go right now. It might be the most athletic running back in the draft. The biggest question for Trey Benson isn't necessarily him. It's what teams value the running back position and where do they value it at. Uh, last year, I think we saw two running backs go in the first round. I don't expect to see that. A lot of people are very down on the running back class this year. And there's a decent reason to be. I don't know if there's that premier star. But I'm going to tell you this. And I'm I'll call me a homer. Call me what you want. If there's a guy that's going to break out of this running back class, it's going to be the guy that's 216 pounds and runs the 4-3. I'm just going to go ahead on a limb and say that right now. I'll put my money on Trey Benson. My, my draft projects for him, man, it's tough to tell with these running backs. I think a team is going to look at his size and speed and that combo and have a hard time passing him up. But you got to draft the value. The value says... Third, fourth round. He doesn't make it past the fourth round. I'm pro he was number three. I'm thinking the third round. And that's not a knock on Trey. That's just the running back position as a whole. Thinking third round for Trey Benson. Could a team take a flyer in the second? Hey, if a team when needs a running back and he's the highest one, you could see him go in the second round. Would not shock me. Best case scenario is definitely second round. I'm, I'm going to go with third, though. Shout out to Trey Benson. Whew, that's a big boy, and he can run. Let's go. Before we get into our last combine participant, I did want to go over a few guys that showed up um, at the combine but didn't really participate in any of the drills, got measured, got weighed, did all those good things, but didn't participate in any drills. That's Fabo, that's Bethune, and that's JT. Fabo, man, I think... When you're talking about drawing up a defensive tackle, man, I think that's what Fabian Lovett is. Uh, the problem with Fabian Lovett has always been and continues to be, can he stay on the field? If he's healthy, I think Fabian Lovett's a pretty good defensive tackle. Um, but he can't stay on the field. I don't think Fable gets drafted. Uh, maybe he'll do some stuff at the pro day that can change my mind, but I'm not so sure about that. Tatum Bethune's another one. He didn't participate in any of the drills, but 
I don't know. I, I, I the linebackers for me aren't. I don't know. I don't know where you draft them at. I think you can make a roster, but again, if I'm drafting Tatum Bethune uh, as of right now with no 40 time, no none of the times he's got a fifth round grade at best, in my opinion, Tatum Bethune, and of course Jordan Travis. Um, I always thought it was an uphill climb for Jordan Travis. We'll see what happens with Jordan Travis. Um, I think Jordan Travis goes undrafted, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens with JT. But that's just, I just want to give those guys a little bit of shine. They were at the combine. They just didn't participate. For Whether it's injuries or whatever reasons, they decided not to participate in the drills. I lied. I said this guy was the last. We actually got one more guy that I forgot about. I can't even believe I forgot about him, but we probably saved the best for last. Either way, man, this beast of a human being here... And Johnny Wilson might have, I talked about Braden Fisk being the biggest mover. Johnny might have made him a little bit more money here. He surprised me with that 40 time. We knew he had elite, you know, and I hate the word elite because we throw it around too willy-nilly in today's sports landscape. But seriously, Johnny Wilson has elite measurables for a wide receiver Because he's built like very few wide receivers have ever been built. He's over six feet tall. He's 230 pounds. And just, oh yeah, and by the way, the man runs a 4.5. That's actually faster than Kelvin Benjamin, folks. Which I did not see coming. I did not see that coming. Shout out to Johnny. Because with that size, that catch radius, that wingspan... Those hand size, that hand size, all the numbers, all the measurables, that four or five is going to be critical when the team's looking at him. I think Johnny may have moved up to a late first round pick. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that. I think Johnny may have moved into a late first rounder with the premium on the wide receiver position. They may look at Johnny and go, uh oh, we got us one. Shout out to Johnny Wilson, man. I think that 4-5 solidified him as one of the better receiver prospects in the draft. Last, but certainly not least, is the man, number five, Jared Verse. The guy that I think is a top 15 pick. We'll just get that out of the way now. And I'm going to tell you why for all the reasons here. You're talking about a 6'3", 6'4", 254-pound athletic monster. 4'6", 31 reps on the bench, a 35-inch vert. Jared Verse shows that he is explosive and powerful, which if you've watched him, you know exactly that's what he is. We've watched him bull rush and ragdoll offensive linemen his two years at Florida State. So it should be no surprise that Jared Verse put up those type of... I mean, in my opinion, that bench press, 31 reps, that's... Big time. That's, to me, that's maybe the most impressive um, combine number, in my opinion, he put up. Uh, He's strong. He's big. He's athletic. And he's getting compared to last year's number three overall pick, Will Anderson. I mean, they almost have identical measurables and numbers. So I don't know how you look at Jared Verse and don't see top 15. Hell, top 10 isn't out of the question at all when it comes to Jared Verse as he's probably the highest rated Noel in any dra- mock draft right now. And Jared Verse is going to make a lot of money at the next level because he's a freak. Shout out to Jared Verse, man. And that is all the players that showed up and showed out at Florida State's Combine. If you like the video and more videos like it, please subscribe to 863 Seminole TV. For those of you that are already subscribed and support the channel, Thank you for tuning in. As always, it is your boy Polk. Stay classy, Seminoles, and we are out here. Go Nose.